Discover the exquisite beauty of Islam with our exclusive poster collection showcasing the 99 names of Allah. Each poster meticulously presents the Arabic name, pronunciation and English translation, embodying the essence of our Creator. Elevate your surroundings with these high-quality designs that not only serve as art, but also offer a glimpse into the profound beauty of Islamic culture. Immerse yourself in the collection and unveil the magnificence of the 99 names. Links in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, you really want me to react to Andrew Huberman and his faith in God. Andrew Huberman, PhD, is a neuroscientist and professor in the Department of Neurobiology and by courtesy psychiatry and behavioral sciences at Stanford School of Medicine. From what I know, Andrew is a Christian and therefore it would be very interesting to hear how a Christian with a scientific background perceives God, what his thoughts are of God himself and moreover, if they really align with Christianity or do they align more with Islam. We shall find out. Guys, before we jump into the video, leave me a thumbs up if you enjoy my content, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and check out the links in the description box to further support. And now with no further ado, let's have a look. When you're talking about the brain and all the, I mean, you, you mentioned it last night and this, this had me thinking, it's like, when you think how all that works, I have to take an aside and say, how could that happen in nature is without a creator? Yeah. So, right. well, here's the thing. I mean, we know that the programs, meaning genes, so genes, DNA, and there's DNA, then there's RNA, and then there's proteins. And proteins are the action end of the game where they say, hey, like, grow over here, don't grow over there, mm -hmm. you know, um, become this kind of cell, dopamine cell or a serotonin cell. We know that those mechanisms are incredibly well conserved from mice to humans. Now, mm -hmm. certain things happen in the human brain that you don't see in other species, like the elaboration of the parts of the brain that are involved in context and planning, mm -hmm. especially. Sure. But the memory systems, the ones that control hormones, breathing, heart rate, they're very similar. Mm. Not exactly the same, but very similar. Okay. When you start to study and understand brain development, as I did, or neuroplasticity, or dopamine, you have to. Meaning, I don't care if you're an atheist, agnostic, or believer in creator. You have to step back and just go. Wow. Wow. Now, then, of course, there's this difference among scientists as to who believes in God, who mm -hmm. doesn't. I'll just go on record. I'm very comfortable saying that. I believe in God. I do. Mm -hmm. I think it's very interesting to observe and very tragic at the same time that he, as a scientist, has to say, well, I'm going to go on record. I am very comfortable. But if he was very comfortable, then he wouldn't have to say that he is comfortable, that I believe in God. So it is very interesting to see what this scientific, quote unquote, culture has created, a culture that can believe only in either or. It cannot believe in science and in God. Those are contradictory. And I believe that this is due to Christianity and due to the corruption within the Bible. Certain texts such as that God rested on the seventh day, certain attributions to God that depict him as a sky daddy are simply not scientific. It is absolutely true. And therefore Christianity is in contradiction to science. However, if you would give Islam a chance, you would actually find out that Islam and science go hand in hand. I believe in God. I do. Mm -hmm. I think there are many things that science can explain. Mm -hmm. There are certain things science can't explain. But I'll even go a step further, which is that all the elements of science are entirely compatible with the idea of there being a God. And I'm not the first sure. scientist to say this. I mean, mm -hmm. Einstein God, believed sure. in God. Um, Carl Jung, one of the greatest psychologists ever, clearly believed in God. There are many atheist scientists. There are agnostic scientists who are just kind of like unsure, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, for me, I'm in absolute awe, absolute awe of biology. 
Mm -hmm. It's just incredible that we're sitting here having this conversation. It's just, it's with language that they're little sound yeah. waves that are, you're perceiving and understanding. I mean, it's just, and I think the brain represents the apex of incredible in terms of biology. Like the heart is interesting. The immune system is interesting. The liver is interesting, but the brain is unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, think about the number of different ways you can move your body compared to another species. Mm -hmm. Think about what you did today. Think about what I was attempting to do today, right? Yeah. Spectacular. Think about technology, these lights, the, you know, Tesla cars, spaceships. I mean, yeah. the internet, I mean, unbelievable mm -hmm. and yet oh so real. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, we could talk a bit about how I, you know, well, I'll just say this. Secretly, I've always prayed. I grew up in a split religion home. My mm -hmm. family's like the UN. We've got people from Guatemala, <laughs> uh, Denmark, Argentina, New York, like all the different political battles are in my family. Super left, super right, libertarians, mm -hmm. lefties to the, you know, yeah. it's crazy. Uh, Thanksgivings can be difficult. Yeah. But I'll say this, you know. But they're all Christians. Uh, I absolutely right? pray. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love that the idea, but also what for me is really a deep belief, which is that we can't control everything. We're not in as much control as we think we are. And that the magnificence of biology and the magnificence of, of nature is, um, it, it's, imp it's impossible to, for me to conceive how that could be come about any other way. Yeah, this is really beautiful to see because as Muslims, what we hear here is the fitra, of course. The fitra is the natural predisposition of men to understand that there must be a creator. And Andrew Huberman is marveling at the creation of the creator. It is innate in him and you can see that he is in awe. Here is a passage of the Quran that describes exactly this phenomena that Andrew Huberman is experiencing. Indeed, in the creation of the heavens and the earth and the alternation of the night and the day are signs for those of understanding. So those passages in the Quran describe nature, our earth, and moreover, the believer, the believer that understands innately that there must be a creator. I would say that Andrew Huberman got this completely. Innately, he understands that there must be a creator to the creation. It is way too complex to come out of nothing. It just is. Now, yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, full stop. Yep. Who do you pray to? Interesting. Uh, that's an interesting one because I think uh, God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, yeah. I absolutely do. I've actually started reading the Bible recently, start mm -hmm. to finish. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like it's my duty to like learn and sure. in some sense, compare Old and New Testament. Mm -hmm. Yep. I, I'm like really, I'm really interested in the stories, but I'm also, I'm fascinated by the story of us, right? And, and the story of everything. And so, but yeah, I pray out loud in the morning, um, sometimes again in the middle of the night if I wake up. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's only recently that I've been doing this more often. It's given you yeah. peace? Or? Oh, my goodness. It's given me so much. It's given me peace. And you know, this is gonna sound weird and probably people are gonna be like, what are you talking about? If you're this, it, no. it, it, it works, mm -hmm. it works. There's a, there's a way in which certain things I was grappling with, you know, um, I just couldn't resolve. Yes, it absolutely works. And this yet again reminds me of the Quran because in the Quran we read, your Lord says, call upon me, I will respond to you. This is the promise that we can find within the Quran. As long as you pray to God directly, of course God will answer you. You do not have to pray to Jesus, to Mother Mary, to certain saints. You do not need any intercession. You pray to God alone. And if you pray to God alone, God surely will answer you. This is what we believe as Muslims. And therefore it is absolutely amazing here that Andrew actually wants to compare the Old Testament to the New Testament. It will be really interesting to hear how he reconciles the contradictions. Why is the New Testament so different from the Old One? And this is truly what happened to me because if you don't know, I come from an Orthodox Christian background before opening up the Quran. Everything started falling into place 
once I looked at the Quran and after it looked at the Bible from the lens of the Quran. I started understanding why I had those contradictions, those issues with the Bible in the first place. Because within the Old Testament, we can clearly see, most of the time at least, monotheism. But then later on, out of a sudden, it becomes a Jesus worship centric religion. And this is why it is so extremely confusing. But here you can see that Andrew Huberman apparently hasn't read the Bible completely up until now. He's identified culturally, potentially, as a Christian, but nevertheless, intuitively, naturally, he prays to God alone. And this is what Islam is. Dear Andrew, in case if you're watching, Islam is simply the worship of one God alone. We do not attribute any partners to God. We do not worship anybody besides God. It is not about having some other type of prophet here. This was my background. I really believed, oh, well, Christians have Jesus, the Buddhists have Buddha, and the Muslims, they have Muhammad. That's not what Islam is about. Islam simply identifies who those people were. We believe in Jesus. We believe in Abraham. We believe in Noah. And of course, we believe in Prophet Muhammad. May peace be upon them all. But what we believe is that those people are creations of God. Exalted creations, but creations nevertheless. They came to us with the same message. The message is worship one God alone. This is Islam. And therefore, Islam, if you look into it, has beautiful practices such as praying five times per day. And I'm sure that this will resonate with Andrew, of course, because naturally he is drawn towards praying even more. And he says it works. Of course it works, because you redirect your focus from the mundane everyday life onto the highest onto God. And God will surely guide you if you do so. Couldn't do it. And it was all internal. And I just couldn't do it. What, what, how were you trying to resolve these things? Like have an answer? Yeah, discipline myself. I mean, it wasn't like I was super, uh, you know, undisciplined. I mean, obviously I have a lot of self-discipline, but yeah. you know, I, like I, I always pray, you know, I want to remove my defects of character. I want to, um, you know, I, I certainly pray for other people. Um, I, I mostly, you know, these days I pray for the ability to really harness as much care and love for other people and for myself, something I haven't been that good at mm -hmm. in my lifetime, um, in order to be able to put the best possible work into the world mm. to really serve. Like I really see myself as serving higher power, mm -hmm. like I'm a conduit. Right. Um, and the better I can do that, the better I'm serving. The better I'm serving, the more I feel connected to humanity. It's again absolutely amazing listening to this because his perspective truly aligns with Islam. He wants to be a servant of God. He wants to serve God. And this is the relationship that Islam proposes here as well. Within Christianity, we are seen as children of God. Some say metaphorically, others mean it literally. It is a bit confusing. But nevertheless, if you focus only on being a child of God, you miss, of course, the responsibility that is implicit with serving God. And within Islam, we see ourselves as slaves to God, absolute servants to God. We understand that he is all powerful and that everything happens within his will. We have no chance but to obey him because he is God. After all, the creator of all things, there is no higher deity but him. And because we love God and because we understand that God is the creator of all goodness, we want to submit ourselves to him. And this is what Islam means translated. Islam, the word translated, simply means submitting to God. A Muslim is a believer that submits his will to God's will, understanding that his will oftentimes is flawed. If you look at people and their will, it is most of the time just desires. I want a fancy car, I want more money, I want more food, I want sex, and what not. But by removing our will and submitting ourselves to God, we want his will to be done. This is something that you can find within the Father's Prayer within Christianity. This is the closest that you will come to Islam when you use Christian prayers. But Islam itself proposes that we submit ourselves to God alone. And through that, we find ultimate peace within this life. Do you think that with this with this? I don't know if you've always felt like this. It sounds like it's more of a, a newer 
newer feeling. But. Somewhat, although secretly. Yeah. Like in Santa Barbara, I'll just say there's this place, Sands Beach, down at the end of the beach, if anyone's ever been there. And mm -hmm. I used to run down there once a week. I always did a long run, long for me, run yeah. on Sunday, yeah. minus a 72 pound rock. Right. And I would pray. Mm. And I just pray for, you know, be honest with myself, be honest with others. And that was years ago. I was 18. Oh, okay. 19, 20. So um, it's a night. And then, you know, I've seen some hardship along the way. I mean, I, would just mention that I've had three amazing scientific advisors. You know, Harry shot himself. Mm. Two weeks after I told him we published a paper in science, he said, come on down to Santa Barbara. It'd be great to take you out for pizza and celebrate. Mm -hmm. Two weeks later, he ate a bullet in the bathtub. Barbara died of cancer when she was 50. I'm mm -hmm. friends with her daughter. I, you know, saw her, she did have those two kids. <laughs> yeah. One's a neuroscientist oh, man. Um, at McGill. And um, she was like a mom to me. Mm -hmm. She died. I was speaking at her memorial. And then my postdoc advisor died. He was a pretty impressive guy in mm -hmm. his own right. And so at one point I'm thinking like, what's going on? You know, I'm right. the common denominator. Right. How am I picking these people? Mm -hmm. But they were amazing. And, you know, I had some friends commit suicide, you know, this kind of thing. And, and you know, you live long enough, that's going to happen. People are going to go. Mm -hmm. That's just the reality. Mm -hmm. But there were times I'm like, you know, it was dark. It was, you know, like, where am I? Why? Why me? And at those moments too, just accepting that there's a plan and it's happening for a reason and I don't know what it is and just putting my trust in that allowed me to, to grieve those things properly and to really try and, you know, I got the message, I got the download to take the lessons from them and just not waste a single day. Man, yet again, this is absolutely mind-blowing because pretty much everything that he states here is absolutely Islamic. This actually reminds me of a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he says, and if something bad befalls you, do not say, had I only done such and such, then such and such would have happened. Rather say, this is from the will of Allah and he does whatever he wills. This is one of the aspects of a true Muslim, of a true believer, when you understand that everything happens because of the will of God. And who are you to question it? I always give the example of my son. My son is almost three years old and he, of course, would like to eat candy every single day. That is his will. I, on the other hand, as a father, am a little bit wiser than him. And of course, I know that eating candy every day is not a good idea. Therefore, I impose my will onto him, of course. And I say, nope, today you won't have candy. In his world, I'm, of course, an evil tyrant that doesn't let him have his pleasure, doesn't let him have his candy. But I am looking out for him. I know why certain things have to happen. I know better than him. And it's the same understanding with God. You understand there is a greater intelligence than you out there. That intelligence created everything around you. Nature, the universe, etc., etc. Everything has been created by that magnificent creator. And so therefore we understand that we are limited in our outlook. And therefore our will will lead us astray. And this is why when we see bad things happening, we have to accept them as they are. Ultimately, they are good because they're decreed by God. To do things that re I really felt mattered. Hmm. So to me, it's all always been linked right. to, you know, sort of forces greater than me, certainly. Does it feel like, you know, when I'm hearing all this, does it feel like once you've taken like this, a, a more... I don't know, intentional turn for being grateful and praying. You're not drinking since 2019. It seems like that's <laughs> yeah, you're Muslim, been Andrew. in tandem that's with amazing, success. Man. So for people that don't know, alcohol within Islam is absolutely prohibited. It is the only religion that prohibits alcohol completely. Christians drink wine. If you look into any other religion, Jews, for example, they can drink alcohol as well. It is only Islam that prohibits alcohol completely. And as a scientist, as a neuroscientist, he clearly understands the detrimental effects of alcohol. You know, I always wanted to have a deeper relationship to, to God. I always wanted that. And I kind of was amazing. like, why don't I have that? Well, duh. That's like saying, I want to be fit. Why well, I'm not, I'm not fit. Well, because you're not running, you're not, not lifting, you're not doing the things. It was like, yeah. And it was a, um, a couple of different people that kept showing up in my life and, and, and they were doing it. And it was like, well, pray. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've learned, and I certainly try and do this, that a lot of prayer is about listening. Mm. And a lot of prayer is about you, you, 
ask for things or listen for things. And then an hour later, two days later, you go, wait, mm -hmm. like it doesn't happen in the moment necessarily, just like fitness. I don't right. want to compare fitness. I don't want to trivialize prayer by, by comparing to right. fitness, but there's some parallels that are relevant. Yeah. Parallel for sure. you, uh, it's right. consistent work. Yeah. It's consistent work. And then all of a sudden, like things come up mm -hmm. and you're like, oh my goodness, I can't believe it. That makes so much sense. Now, I think that the success of the podcast, first of all, I'm incredibly grateful for it. Incredibly grateful. But in many ways, I'm doing exactly what I was doing when I was that six, seven, eight, nine year old kid. I'm yeah. learning and sharing. So it was always in me. And it always felt like this energy, this thing, like, it's like, how did, how did I end up like this? How come all the other kids like don't have this? Mm -hmm. All right, this is it for today's video. I'm gonna cut it off here. It was absolutely beautiful to see that pretty much everything that he stated was aligning with Islam. And this is really what it boils down to. This is what we call the fitra, the natural predisposition of men. You can clearly see that he hasn't read much into Christianity yet because nothing that he mentioned here was Christian whatsoever. He didn't talk about Jesus, Mother Mary, the Trinity, etc., etc. you name it. No, he was talking naturally, intuitively, instinctively about his relationship to God. With the things that he learned in life, he understood that if you put in the work, such as with fitness, and I come from a fitness background myself, then you will see a positive outcome. It is the same thing with the relationship to God. Yes, absolutely. And this is where you see people, especially people that are into martial arts or bodybuilding, gravitating towards Islam. Because they identify that within Islam, there are steps to success, spiritual success. They're the same success steps that they've seen prior to it within their sports. Many martial artists, as I said, are converting to Islam because they understand they have to train day in, day out, diet, weight cut, and whatnot. It is gruesome, but if you put in the work, you will reap the reward. Why would it be any other way with anything in life, let alone with God? And this is where Christianity and Islam differ tremendously because Christians believe that they're saved by faith alone. Just believe in Jesus and you're going to be saved. Proclaim Jesus is Lord. Yeah, well, I don't believe that it is that easy. And Andrew Huberman doesn't either. And anybody that truly rationalizes faith doesn't believe that either. Christianity is very idealistic ultimately. Hey, Jesus died for your sins and now you can do whatever you want to do basically. You are saved by grace. That doesn't make sense. We are created by God. We have a responsibility towards our creator and towards his creation as well. We are supposed to do good in this world and prepare for the hereafter. We have certain obligations, especially as men. And therefore, yet again, everything that he mentioned here is absolutely Islamic, which yet again confirms Islam because Islam is the only religion that talks about the natural predisposition. Within Christianity, you have the Old Testament, you had prophets that came, but all of a sudden Jesus comes and dies for your sins, and now we all have to be Christians. But what was prior to Jesus? Noah was not a Christian, Abraham was not a Christian, and if you look into those characters, then you find out, well, they weren't Jews either. So who were those people? Once you read into those archetypes, you will find out that those people submitted their will to God. This was their relationship with the Creator. Abraham went so far that he would have sacrificed his firstborn son to God because he believed in God so much. He understood that the will of God is superior to his will and therefore he submitted, which makes him a Muslim. This is the only relationship, the only natural relationship that you can have with God. And this is why we say within Islam that we are all born as believers, as Muslims, but then our parents make us into Christians or Hindus or Buddhists or what not. But our natural predisposition wants to worship God alone. And this is what Andrew Huberman has done intuitively. Now, if you would really like to get even closer to God, and within Islam we say when you make one step towards God, God makes thousands of steps towards you. The next step would be, of course, to read the Quran. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out the links in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.